Happy Friday, everybody. So I am back with another Friday DVR takeover. And in case if you've missed me these past few weeks, my name is Stuart Huggins, and I am the intern here at the West Center in Chattanooga. And I am also the director of youth ministries at St. John United Methodist Church. And I like to jump over here on Fridays and send you guys off on a safe and healthy weekend with this crazy summer and this crazy world we're all living in right now. So today is August 7th. And our DBRs for today are Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, as well as verse 16 through 22. Genesis 36, verses 1 through 8. Acts 18, verses 24 through 28. Psalm 85, verse 8 through 13. 1 Kings chapter 18, 17 through 19, also verses 30 through 40. And Acts chapter 18, verses 24 through 28. So I want to focus on Psalm Psalm 85, uh, 8 through 13, but it's a pretty short psalm, so I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to dig into all of it right now, just uh, give you guys a little bit of a bonus thing, bonus DVR for the weekend. All right, so it says, You, Lord, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You gave the iniquity of your people and, all, and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your face, from your fierce anger. Excuse me, I can't talk today, guys. Restore us again, God, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to foley. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithful meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth. And righteousness looks down from earth, and the heaven will indeed give what is good. And our land will yield his harvest. Righteousness goes before him and pre prepares the steps for his way. So again, I'm going to chunk it up to the, um, let's talk about the first one, verses 1 through 7 first, and then we're going to jump into 8.13, which is what our DBR is supposed to be about today. So um, again, what, 85, 1 through 7 is kind of um, a prayer for the continuance of the former mercies that Lord, the Lord has had on us, right? So the sense of presence, uh, uh, the sense of present afflictions should not be should not do away the remembrance of the mercies that we've been given so far. The favor of God is the fountain of of um of joy and peace to all nations as well as to a to to people themselves, not just nations but to people. Individual people. So when God forgives sins, he covers it completely. And when he covers the sin of his people, he covers it all, all of it, right? Not just not just the not so ugly stuff, right? All of it. So what the pardon of sin is, is more of a compassion to us when Christ, our intercessor, has stood before thee, right? Thou has turned away thine anger, his anger, right? When he, when we reconcile to God, then we expect, we receive comfort of being reconciled from the sin that we've been chained to, Right? He shows mercy to those whom he grants salvation, but for salvation is of mere mercy, right? The Lord's people may expect sharp and tedious afflictions when they commit sin. But when they return to him in humble prayer, he, he makes us pure again and we rejoice in him, right? All right, now let's jump into 8 through 13. 8 through 13, the idea is to trust in God's goodness, right? Goodness, excuse me. Sooner or later, God will speak peace to his people. And um, if, if he doesn't command outward peace, yet he will suggest inward peace to us, speaking to, the, speaking to our hearts by his spirit. So peace is spoken only to those who turn from sin, right? All sin is foley, especially backsliding. It is the greatest foley to return to sin is backsliding, right? Surely God's salvation is something we don't want to turn away from. 
but whatever our difficulties and our distresses can sometimes distract us from that, right? Mm -hmm. Also, his honor is secured that glory may dwell in our land, right? And the truth of the promises is shown by the divine mercy in sending to the Redeemer. So the divine justice is not satisfied by the great atonement, but Christ, the way, the truth, and the light, sprang out of the earth when he took our nature upon him, and divine justice looked upon him well pleased and satisfied, right? For his sake, all good things, especially his Holy Spirit, are great to those who ask him. Through Christ, the pardoning sin becomes fruitful in good works, and by looking to and trusting in the Savior's righteousness, we find his feet in all of our steps that we take. So righteousness is, is a sure guide both in meeting, meeting God and in following him and being the best Christ-like example we can be as Christians. Well, all right, guys. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. It was a little longer than usual, but I think we all got through it. And I, and I will see you guys next Friday. Peace.